I'm Thomas Morgan. I had talked a little bit about the Transylvania Purchase and Dragon Canoe speech. Now, I'd like to bring you up to the very first morning of the Siege of Fort Watauga. I touched on talking a little bit about the girls going out to milk and getting caught by the Cherokee and all of them making it back to safety, except one, Bonnie Kate. So I'd like for you to hear her story. My name is Catherine Cheryl Severe, whereas you come to know me, Bonnie Kate. It's been quite a while since the attack from the Cherokee on Fort Watauga. It seems like a lifetime ago. I came here in 1773 with my father Samuel to the Old Chucky, along with many other settlers. We had leased land from the Cherokee, which worked quite well for a time. We were living here quite peaceably. But there was starting to be rumblings from the young warriors that they were unhappy with the leasing. They wanted their land. And so they started having small attacks along the settlements. And we got word that there was a large scale attack coming soon. So John Sevier, who lived not far from here, he began to erect Fort Lee, which was sooner or later abandoned because they were calling him up from Fort Watauga. John Carter and James Robertson were needing him. So he left for there and shortly after my family and I went, the day before the attack. We met many families there who were gathering and making preparations. It seemed quite innocent at the time actually, just people gathering, wondering. So the next morning at dawn, some of the ladies and I took out to the fields and we were going to milk cows because, well, livestock doesn't wait for you. They won't hold their milk for an impending attack. So I took to the farther edge, for I had no fear. My father raised us to trust in providence. He said, don't be lazy or your blood will run stagnant and your trust will die. So, took to milking. It was a beautiful morning. All quite innocent, actually. And then I heard Lydia Bean scream. And I looked up and there were old Abrams warriors all around us. And so, the ladies took to the fort, screaming. Some of the men were already shooting. And I, being far behind, it just didn't make it in time. They had already closed the fort walls because it was just, it was too dangerous for the others to leave it open for me. I guess Providence knew what was going to happen that day for they said of me that I could outrun, outjump, and outride any woman in the territory. And so I took all the strength that God had put in me and I ran. And when I ran, I, I looked behind me and I saw Cherokee all around me and there were Cherokee in front of me. So I veered to the back of the fort and I looked to the wall and I knew I had to jump. So I leapt and I, I went up and I grabbed hold of someone's hand. But as soon as I had enough strength to pull myself over, they loosed their hand and we both fell to the ground. And in the moment, I heard John Severe yell, jump, Bonnie Kate, jump! So I mustered up all the courage I had in me. And I knew it was now, leap or die, for I would not be held captive. So I leapt and I grabbed hold and there was John's hand. And he pulled me over and I fell safely into his arms. It was the most joyous relief in my life. I had never thought that I would make it. And I looked into his face and I just felt safe. You know, I would gladly go through that peril all again, just to know that I could be in his arms and be out of danger again. Well, we waited in the fort for another two weeks for the siege. And they finally ended. And we all slowly returned to our farms and our settlements and lived well for a while. 
four years actually. And in that time, I grew to know John and his family. And in 1780, his dear wife, Sarah, had passed. And in the fall, that man who saved me from certain doom, he became my husband. And it was not long after that all our men would be in danger again from an enemy almost within. The British had brought guns and brought men and our men rose up to fight them. So John and three of his sons had taken up. In the three weeks from our marriage, I made sure that they had food and clothing. And you know, if John's 10 children had all been men and all been of the age to fight, I would have outfitted them all. We gathered at Sycamore Shoals and watched them leave for Kings Mountain, not knowing who would return, and many did not. So in that time, several offered me shelter in their homes, asking me to come for them and, and stay. But you know, the wife of John Severe knows no fear. So I stayed, managed the farm, and marketed our products. But we were not safe from the British. In fact, the Tories were all around us. They came to our home one night and demanded to know where John was. And they would offer up my family and I protection if I was to give my husband up. And I refused. One of the men stuck his pistol right in front of me and said, we're going to find John and we're going to hang him. And I looked at him square in the eye and I said, shoot, for I am not afraid to die. Leader of those men looked at him and told him to lower his pistol and said, such a woman is too brave to die. Well, I don't know about that, but we went to live on and John became the governor of Tennessee. So I became the first lady and we had eight children together. You know, it was a remarkable time to live and a wonderful thing to witness.